It gives me great pride and tremendous pleasure to introduce our first student keynote speaker today. She is Erica Cabrera, the WHEELS Class of 2015 valedictorian. And in thinking about how to strike the right balance in sharing with you just a bit about who Erica is, and where I landed was to read to you the personal statement that Erica wrote about a year ago which led to her acceptance and ultimately her beginning in the last couple of months as a freshman at Dartmouth College. So remember, this is Erica's voice, not mine. Since my college application process began this summer, I've met people who asked me my class rank, my GPA, and my standardized test scores before asking my name. It is as if they qualify everything as a competition and that these statistics will prove me worthy or not. However, I am more than test scores and my class rank. I am Erica, who seeks to make a positive impact in this world. Rocio, who is motivated to excel at everything I do. And Cabrera, who takes responsibility seriously and leads by example. This is what makes me Erica Rocio Cabrera. Seventeen-year-old Erica Cabrera has big dreams. She rides the subway every day for over an hour each way, hoping her dedication and hard work will pay off with acceptance to her dream school. Dartmouth, like I couldn't help it but to fall in love. So hopefully, I get accepted. Now it's time for decisions and plans on a journey that started with a symbolic three-block walk last December. Congratulations, class of 2015. And what about Erica Cabrera? Well, on the eventful day she checks the Dartmouth website, her mom is by her side. Good morning. My name is Erica Cabrera and I'm a freshman at Dartmouth College and a graduate of Washington Heights Expeditionary Learning School, or WHEELS, in New York City. I would like to thank the entire EL education community for welcoming me to your national conference. I would like to share with you more of my personal journey to this point and how, despite being the first in my family to attend college, I learned along the way that with the right amount of support and my own drive to succeed, I can reach my goals. So let's rewind to the summer of 2014, prior to the start of my senior year of high school. The limit as the function approaches infinity, and there's a knock on the door. Excuse me, Mr. Manfu. Erica needs to go to the main office. Erica, your mother has asked that you give her a call. I rush out of my summer calculus class at Phillips Academy. I automatically begin to think the worst situation imaginable. I reach the main office and ask the secretary if I can use the office phone. In less than two rings, my mother picks up. Erica, te tengo que decir algo, pero tienes que quedarte calmada. First know that I want you to continue studying and there's nothing that can deter you from your dreams. Your uncle passed away last night. He drifted off into, the death, into his death without any pain. He is in a better place now and he will be watching over us. Before my mother can even finish recounting the story, I begin to cry and shake as if my body is going into shock. When I heard the news that my uncle passed away, I was overwhelmed and saddened, mostly because I did not have the opportunity to say goodbye. To make matters worse, I did not have many recent memories with him. One thing I do recall, however, was a series of long talks and lessons when I was a child. Make something out of this world, he would tell me. Do not just be in this world so there could be more people. His death led me to realize that I do not want to leave this world and have others wondering what I could have been with only vague memories and ideas of my contribution to society. Thus, I committed to setting high expectations and big goals for myself. This exact same message is something my mother has always told me. She moved to the United States from the Dominican Republic when she was 19 years old. She started high school at George Washington High School in New York City 
and decided quickly to drop out of school to help her mother, my grandmother, make ends meet. She found a job at a factory in New Jersey and would wake up every single day before five o'clock in the morning in order to catch a bus that would take her to, to her 12 hour shift. Do you know the saying, old habits die hard? Well, to this day, my mother still wakes up at 5 a.m., but instead drives herself 45 minutes to a gas station where she works as a cashier. Unfortunately, though, waking up so early for a low-paying job is a habit my mother would gladly break in a heartbeat if she had a better education. She has shared this with me countless times, and it has motivated me to accomplish what my mother has not. Despite never completing high school, if there is any person in this world that I know firsthand that does not give up in the face of anything, it is my mother. Her single goal in life is to make my brother and me happy, and she succeeds every single day. Her tenacity led me to my realization that nothing can stop me as long as I have the mo motivation to persevere, and that I do. To this day, my family still struggles to make ends meet. In light of this, I knew that I needed to apply to several scholarships to afford college. In August of 2014, the summer right before my senior year, I began my application for the Questbridge College Scholarship. Before school even started, I emailed Mr. Kimmel to ask if he could give me feedback on my short answers and essays, and we met in person to go over everything. I then submitted what I thought was a solid application. However, almost exactly a year ago today, those high expectations and big plans took a major hit when I found out that I was not selected. For the first time in my academic life, I experienced failure. I was broken, I doubted myself, I wondered for the first time, am I the big fish in a small sea at wheels? Will I be able to compete for scholarships and admissions to a top college with other students around the country that are just like me, if not smarter and more highly qualified than me? I found myself at crossroad. Would I give in and succumb to the pressure and the self-doubt, or would I find a way even against what may have seemed to be giant odds, to do more than seemed possible to climb the huge mountain in front of me. Never one to back away from a challenge and knowing that I had to persevere through this one, I knew I needed to regroup. This was reinforced for me through crew. My crew was always my go-to group of peers and my crew leader was always my point person whenever I needed support. As a group, we collaborated and worked together to ensure each other's successes and it always extended beyond the classroom and our learning expeditions. Crew, crew was a place we could talk about family, current and school events, and especially challenges we faced. The structure and support of crew was one that I still cherish to this day. In fact, my senior year crew even has a group text, which by the way, also includes our crew leader, Mr. Kimmel, that we still use to offer support as we are churning out college papers or studying for exams. But even with the structure and support of my crew, it's a different experience to apply to college if that is not a part of your family's history. During my senior year of high school, I had to uncover every resource I could find to manage the college application process. In some ways, it was no different than doing field work in a learning expedition. I had to research and make a list of reach, target, and safety schools. I had to write my personal statement and writing supplements and then edit and revise them over and over and over again. I had to study for and take the ACT one last time. I had to find scholarships and apply for them and I had to submit my applications on financial aid forms. Without my previous experience at Wheels, that process, which went on for months and months, may have seemed overwhelming but in many ways, it was like my own learning expedition. At first, it was a bit of a mystery for me, but I built background knowledge, knowledge, I researched what I needed to do, I relied on the facilitation and support of my family, teachers and counselors, and I ultimately created a final product that I shared with an authentic high stakes audience, <laughs> college admissions officers. <laughs> the transition from an EL school to an Ivy League college could not have been a smoother one for me. As part of freshman orientation, Dartmouth takes first year students out into the wilderness through the Dartmouth Outing Club. This trip lasts five days, and it is with a group of about eight to 12 other freshmen and two upperclassmen students who are designated as trip leaders. 
As I prepared for my DOC trip, I couldn't help but to realize that I had come full circle in so many ways. The trip is very similar to the one I took as a sixth grader, entering wheels as part of my orientation then. And once again, I went out into the wilderness with individuals I did not know as well. As when I was younger, we built trust and community almost immediately. I felt like I had my own crew, one that has been supportive of me and will continue to be throughout my time at Dartmouth. I knew exactly what I was in for at the moment, and I could not believe how direct the connection could be between my wheels experience and my soon-to-be college experience. Beyond just starting both new journeys almost identically, I am also using a lot of what I took away from the EL approach at Dartmouth. I no longer wait to be approached when I know I'm struggling and need someone's support. Instead, I have sought out to my professors outside of le lecture and regular class time, as well as supportive peers and my teaching assistants. I think it directly correlates to the fact that once you have gotten out of your own comfort zone by pooping in the woods with a poop kit, <laughs> you know that you can do absolutely something as relatively easy as reaching out to a professor for extra help. <laughs> There's also something about not being able to shower for five days in the middle of the woods and having to sleep in a crowded cabin that make you lose any tendency to isolate yourself to your own thoughts and personal space. I have learned to step out of my comfort zone whenever possible, and that collaboration is important if and when it can occur. EL has taught me that learning is powerful both inside and outside of a classroom. For me, it is the idea of applying your knowledge outside of a room and contributing to make your community a better place. EL has pushed me to understand my peers and to use them as supporters for both my own growth and our growth as, collective, as a collective group, as a crew. Because of the seven years I spent at an EL school, I know what advocating for my own learning with others looks like, and I know what it means to work hard both inside and outside of a classroom to achieve a common goal with others. My experience at Wheels did not only mold me into the person I am now, but it molded me into the best version of me I could ever be. Thank you.